year, a rookie head coach, when I was asked about injuries and things like that, I don't think I was as prepared as I needed to be. So I just, I want to start by every week, I'll do the best I can to give you an injury update. So as we head into uh, this week, we started yesterday with practice, as we see it right now, Deshaun Baker, wide receiver for us, will be out. He'll return at some point this season, but he'll, he'll be out. Uh, Brad Bars is out for the season. Um, uh, Casey Gaines has a, a hamstring issue right now, and he'll be limited in practice and won't play in the game. Uh, Evan Gallimberti is a freshman for us. He'll, he is out right now. Uh, Adam Gress is full participation. He'll be ready to go on Saturday. Uh, Deshaun Hamilton is a freshman wide receiver for us. He, he is out right now, and he won't be back for a while. Uh, ben Klein is full participation and should be ready to go for the game. Uh, Garth Lekitsky is a, a linebacker for us, and, and he will not be ready for the game. And uh, Brent Wilkerson will be out for a while. He's had surgery, and he'll be out for a little while. Uh, other than that, I would say we've had the usual bumps and bruises, but uh, basically that gives you an update on the, uh, on the injury front. Uh, so hopefully that helps. And I'll try to do that every week for everybody so we're not having to sit here and, like, I felt like a sixth grader that wasn't prepared for his quizzes when I came in last year, last year sometimes. But, uh, and then the only other thing I want to address up front is the quarterback situation. Uh, you know, again, I, I feel like what, what I try to do every, every week along with our staff is do what's best for our football team. And so right now, uh, you'll find out who the quarterback is on the first play of the game against Syracuse. Now, I'll answer any questions that you have on that, but they'll be very brief answers. I can guarantee you that. So uh, that's the way it's going to go. So I would, you know, again, you want to ask me who the starting quarterback is, you're not going to get that answer. And, and uh, I know that it's, believe me, I'm not trying to, to diminish, uh, you know, the importance of that position and what it means to this football program and what it means to our fans and everything out there. But I want to do what's best for our players and what's best for our football team. And so that's uh, that's what I'm going to do on that. Okay, I think with that I'll open up open it up, Jeff. Okay, Brian, let's go ahead and uh, open it up for questions, starting with Rich Carcel. So, is this situation is obviously different than last year with the quarterbacks? Is this because the two people involved are, are young players? Sure. Are sure, Rich. I mean, I think that's part of it. I think that's part of it. You've got an 18 and a 19 year old guy here. Uh, that's part of it. You know, he just got here basically to Penn State. I mean, Christian just got here a month ago, a little bit more than that, and Tyler was here in January. You know, last year he had a, a seasoned guy who had been through a lot here at Penn State. He was going into his fifth year. Totally different uh, story last year. Uh, and, and again, it's more about what's best for the team. The team understands the direction that we're headed within the building there at Lash, and, and they know where we're going. So that's what's what's important too. And you know, to me it's important going into a first game, not really knowing what, what your opponent's going to do. And you know, I don't really think they know what we're going to do. And they're a very, very good opponent. I think it's important to, to, again, do what's best for your football team, especially going into the first game. Bob Flanders in Harrisburg. Bob, are you on the line? Line is open. Can you guys, can you guys hear me? Go ahead, Bob. Uh, 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 Bill, I was just wondering if we could get your observations and thoughts on, on preseason points to date tonight with regard to, has it been a lot different than last year's game for you and have you and your staff treated it differently because of the circumstances? I felt like we had a uh, very productive camp. I, I believe our guys came back and they understood the expectations of camp. They understood the systems on both sides of the ball and special teams. And we, we had a lot of returning players. I believe we've got uh, some strong leaders on this team that showed the young players the way. You know, again, did we have great days every day? No, but I don't think we had any bad days. You know, we might have had a bad play here or there or a bad series here or there on both sides of the ball, but I don't believe we had any bad days. I think we came out of it healthy, which is very, very important for the most part, especially with our top players. And so I, I believe it was a productive camp. But again, Bob, at the end of the day, you know, the proof will be in the pudding how we play early in the season. 
Derek Lavarson, and Wilkesbury? So, uh, how close have things been in camp between uh, Malcolm Willis and Ryan Kaiser? Uh, do you have a starter picked out there, or how close has that been? I'd say the same answer there for as a, compared to the quarterback. I give you the same answer there. You'll find out on Saturday who starts at safety for us. But both guys are really good players. I mean, they're they're again they'll both play for us. Uh, Malcolm is a leader back there. He's a guy that uh, has played a lot of football for us, and he's come in here and and for the most part been healthy and and had very good productive training camp. Ryan Kaiser, you know, he's he's kind of going into the season. You know, after training camp here, you look at him as somewhat of an unsung hero right now. He's a guy that does a lot of different things for us. He, he's involved in all four special teams, actually five because he's our, our holder on, on PAT field goal, and, and he does a really nice job with that. And, and then obviously he's going to play safety for us. So uh, he's an improved football player. Uh, it, was very, it was a great day last year when we were able to put him on scholarship because if there's a guy that uh, really deserved it. Pennsylvania guy, you know, another Pennsylvania guy that – that understands the meaning of playing at Penn State. Mark Wilgenrich in Allentown. Hi, Bill. Um, what time did you do to reorganize the special teams for this year and understand benefits from that and can I? Well, one thing that prompted that was obviously uh, when John Butler was promoted to defensive coordinator, you know, obviously he, he led the charge with special teams last year. And another thing that prompted it was I just felt it was better for the kids to just hear from two voices, well, three, including me, because I'm heavily involved with special teams, but, you know, two, two main ones in Ron Vanderlyn and in Charles London, I felt like that would consolidate the message a little bit more. So those guys are in charge of two special teams each, and they've done a real nice job of that. And again, you know, the, the players have uh, really adapted to that well. So th those were some of the things that prompted me to, to, to do that. Frank Brudani in York. Hi, Bill. You talked about, and you all know, season a little bit about being a better coach yourself, improving yourself. Is there? Can you look back to this time last year? How do you think you are a better head coach heading into this season than your first season? I mean, this time last year was a blur. You know, I was trying to uh, uh, do as good a job as I could with our staff uh, to keep the team together and and get ready for the first game. And obviously, personally, I didn't do a good enough job in that first game because we didn't win. But uh, so last year is, is last year. You know, this is a new year. And hopefully, personally, I've done enough in the off season to really study uh, what we do and how we practice and how we lift weights and how we condition and how I call plays and, you know, what we're doing on defense and how to improve special teams. And hopefully you see some improvement. But, you know, again, it starts with me, and, and uh, you know, it's not all about what I know. It's more about what the players know, and, and we've got great kids here that are a joy to coach. Just love coaching these guys every single day, and, uh, and you know, hopefully we've, we've you know, taught them well, and, and they'll be ready to go on Saturday. Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia. Obviously, Syracuse defense doesn't know uh, who's going to start for you guys, and you guys don't know who's going to start for Syracuse. So, uh, how do you prepare for unknown quarterbacks? And, and, and they also have a new offensive coordinator, uh, George McDonald. Do you know anything about him? You know, again, uh, Joe, good question. It's, it's really one of the things that's a little nerve-wracking going into the first game is uh, you really don't know what to expect. So you're, you're, you have to make sure that you're, you cover all your bases as best you can. But you also, you can't stay into in the office till 4.30 in the morning trying to block ghosts and things that you don't really know what exists. You know, you just have to go out there in practice and, and, and get your guys to understand uh, base defense, base offense, and how we're going to react if different things come up during the game. You know, when you look at their two quarterbacks, uh, whether it's Hunt or Allen, uh, from what we know, they are two different quarterbacks. So you, you, you've got to be ready for two different style of quarterbacks, you know. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm not going to get into how I see the, the, the difference in their styles, but, you know, we have to do a good job on defense of recognizing who's in the game and, and making sure that uh, we're ready for that. Again, offensively, Syracuse runs the ball very well, um, and, and they have a very uh, potent passing attack. If you look at last year's tape, uh, you, you know, they did an excellent job on offense. George McDonald is a heck of a football coach. Uh, he's been a coach in the National Football League. He's been a coach at – most recently at the University of Miami. have a lot of respect for George, and I know he's got a, a lot in store for us on Saturday, but we just have to 
do a great job of playing with poise and, and adjusting on the fly. Mike Gross in Lancaster. Hi, Bill. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the, the five kids that you, the five run ons that you uh, gave scholarships to uh, uh, yesterday or now. Uh, it, just talk a little bit about how, that, how you actually deliver that news to them and what their reaction to that is. And, and also, uh, going forward, the, the, does this complicate the roster management at all that's happened? Uh, no, I, I, you know, again, I would never do anything to complicate the roster management. So that's the answer to that. The the other thing is, um, uh, I would never do anything intentionally to to complicate the roster management. Uh, what I did was, you know, I've I, I, I've watched these guys over a long period of time. Each guy's been on on our team for a while. Uh, you know, we don't just hand out these things like candy. Uh, you know, you have to earn it. And, and these guys have earned it. Uh, and so what I what I did was I, I met with a couple of key people on our staff and uh, talked to them about these guys that I felt deserved it, both on and off the field, for how they were representing our team and, and how far they had come on the field. And I felt like regardless of whether they were starters or dirty show guys or whatever they were, or special teams core players, whatever they were, I felt like it, it was important for us to reward these guys. And so I brought them in, excuse me, one on one, and I, uh, I told each of them they were very appreciative. They're great kids, uh, and then I, I announced it to the team that same day. So you know, again, it's always a fun experience to do that because these guys have earned it, and, and the team I think really enjoyed hearing that, that these guys had been awarded scholarships for for the for this year. Donnie Collins and Scranton. Hey, Bill. Um, you have played in those two stadiums of a lot of history, you know, Ohio State, Beaver Stadium, you know, maybe somewhere in Alabama a couple of years ago. But I'm wondering if there's anything specific or a different kind of experience you hope they take away from playing in that life in a new or NFL stadium. And what do you think this could mean to them as opposed to playing in some of those historic college stadiums? Well, first of all, for us as a, as a uh, program, it's really important. Uh, for a lot of things to be understood here. First of all, playing at MetLife Stadium means a lot to our to our fans. We have close to 40,000 alums in that area. We've got 12 guys on our team from that area, from Jersey. Uh, you, you know, I think it's just fantastic for Penn State fans. I, you know, I'm hearing that it's not a sellout. I'm not in charge of selling tickets, but I would hope that that would be close to a sellout by Saturday because I think it's a traditional game too. Penn State, Syracuse, I believe, have, have met what, close to 70 times, and and, uh, and so it's a traditional rivalry that hasn't been played in a little bit. So, you know, I think that's part of it. I think for our guys, they have to understand, you know, you're going into a pro stadium, so technically there's some things that are a little bit different, like the field markings. So when you go into the pro stadium, you'll see the difference in the hash marks. You'll have the pro hash marks and then the wider college hash marks. You'll see the pro numbers and the wider college numbers that are just marked by white lines. That's important for our players to understand. And then other than that, yeah, it's important to know that, look, this is where the Super Bowl is going to be played at the end of the year. Hey, this is where the New York Jets and the New York Giants, uh, two fantastic pro football franchises, play. Uh, there have been some great games here uh, already. Even though it's a brand new state, there have been some great games here. So, yeah, I think it's a neat experience for our players, and uh, I think it's great for everybody involved in Penn State.